Well, we gather again uh, Wednesday evening here in the hall um, and we come to God, to his word uh, and to his throne as we gather together to pray. Uh, Let us uh, bow together and let us pray. Gracious and loving, merciful God, our Father in heaven, we bow in thy presence. Thank you again that we can come to you, even we can come to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour and our hope. And we pray you would bless us tonight. Uh, Help us that we might have liberty to sing your praise. Uh, Help us to have uh, the Spirit in full measure that we might hear your word with gladness uh, and give us, Lord, uh, manna from heaven. Uh, Feed us. Uh, from your word uh, and Lord give us uh, that spirit of prayer as we turn together uh, in corporate prayer uh, later so come among us we pray and have preeminence and have the glory we ask in Jesus most precious name Amen Uh, Tonight we'll uh, turn again to God's words. We find it in uh, Numbers 25, uh, Numbers 35, I beg your pardon, but we'll sing first uh, 325. How precious is the book divine by inspiration given, bright as a lamp its doctrines shine to guide our souls to heaven. How precious indeed is the book divine. Let's sing his praise 325. (coughs) How uh, precious indeed is the the book divine, uh, true uh, of uh, all its parts and true 
uh, of the book of Numbers. Uh, precious uh, has been our journeys through the book of Numbers. And um, tonight we're getting towards the end. Uh, we're in Numbers uh, 35 uh, this evening. I'm going to turn there. Uh, and uh, just as you turn there, um, just uh, God willing, uh, Lord's Day coming will be in John's Gospel in the morning, uh, in and around John 3, verse 16. And uh, if you have someone who might benefit from John 3, 16, uh, and everybody in the world will, um, then perhaps uh, you might invite them uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, and God willing, uh, Sunday evening will be in Revelation 2 and at the church in Ephesus. Uh, these things are God willing. Uh, so we're in Numbers 35 tonight, and uh, let's read God's word, Numbers 35. Uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, uh, command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession uh, cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. Ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits and on the south side two thousand cubits, on the west side two thousand cubits and on the north side two thousand cubits. And the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities, them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel, from them that have many, ye shall give many, but from them that have few, ye shall give few. Every one shall give of his cities unto the Levites, according to his inheritance, which he inheriteth. And the Lord spake <coughs> unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side Jordan, three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him and with an hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of uh, hatred, or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he die, 
and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the, re of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whether he was fled, he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, uh, whether he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statue of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall, sh he shall be surely put to death. You shall take no satisfaction from him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein uh, I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Amen. We thank God again for his word. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, how we thank you for your word. And Lord God, we thank you that it is uh, your words by inspiration given, breathed out by thy Holy Spirit. We thank you that these things are written for our instruction, uh, and that we might be warned uh, by them, uh, and that, Lord, these are they which our Lord Jesus Christ uh, told uh, those on the road to Emmaus, uh, these are they which speak of me. We pray, Lord God, uh, that we might uh, be instructed tonight and even see our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask in his precious name. Amen. 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 Uh, so we're getting towards uh, the end uh, of our journey. Um, as the Israelites then uh, prepare uh, to cross into Canaan, uh, here they are on the plains of Moab, uh, opposite or almost opposite is the city of Jericho, and the great barrier of the River Jordan uh, lies between. Uh, and here, uh, the, the concluding uh, chapter or two uh, of the Book of Numbers, then Moses uh, gives instructions, commands uh, given to them uh, as to how they should live uh, and what they should do as they enter into Canaan. Uh, and uh, there are specific commands here uh, uh, given to the children of Israel uh, and there are uh, definite principles um, uh, uh, which still uh, apply, uh, uh, principles and truths that apply to us. Um, so we learn in Numbers 35 uh, of uh, the commands uh, around giving uh, and of killing and of saving. Uh, and those great principles continue uh, to us uh, in the new covenant, uh, principles of giving uh, and of killing uh, and of saving. Uh, so those are the three heads uh, for us tonight, and may, may God uh, help us. So initially, verses 1 to 8, um, we have these uh, instructions on giving. Um, the Israelites are to give, um, uh, from what they are given. Um, they're not being asked to give anything other than what they've been given. It's all of grace, uh, and they are to give from uh, what the Lord is to give them. In the land of Canaan, uh, they have to give uh, for the upkeep of the Levites. 
Uh, that principle continues, uh, which is a very difficult uh, sermon for a pastor to deliver, um, but you'll get the idea, and we'll not labour it too much, um, but the, the Church of Jesus Christ needs to be supported, uh, and uh, the Church of Jesus Christ is to give to support those who serve the Church of Jesus Christ. The labourer is worthy of his hire, and so on. Uh, and the principles are the same. You give out of what you've been given. Uh, verse 8, um, a summary of the cities which you shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many, you shall give many. But from them that have few, you shall give few. Everyone shall give of his um, cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance, which he inherited. It's, uh, they, they got it. It was all of grace. Um, and as one commentator says, uh, for us in the new covenant, when we have given God all uh, that we have and are, we have simply given him his own. Uh, we have nothing other than what he gives us. Um, and we uh, have been given much. Uh, and uh, as we um, recently were in 1 Corinthians 16, uh, you might remember 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2 uh, on Christian giving. We give... Uh, a proportion of uh, what the Lord has given to us. So the Levites <coughs> um, uh, have not given, they've not been given any land, um, but they uh, are to have a place to live uh, and a place to farm um, from the other tribes. 48 um, cities in total. Uh, at verse 7, so all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be 40 and 8 cities. Uh, them shall ye give with their suburbs. Um, so at verse 4 and 5, <coughs> the dimensions of this, uh, the cities uh, and their suburbs are given. Verse 4, uh, the suburbs of the cities you shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits. That's about 500 yards. Uh, and in verse 5, you shall measure from without the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, um, north side, west side, 2,000 cubits. It's about 1,000 yards. Um, these verses, uh, if you know of them, uh, if you study these sort of things, uh, so these verses 4 and 5 uh, are amongst uh, the mistakes of the Bible. Uh, clearly, they don't make any sense. Uh, you've got 1,000 cubits and 2,000 cubits, and, and what's going on here? Um, that book that has all the errors of the Bible um, is really an empty book, isn't it? Because there's no errors in the Bible, but people still try to find them. Um, so the solution, we, uh, uh, if we need a solution, uh, is that this is not a circular shape. Uh, it is, it's a square, uh, and you can measure out 1,000 cubits to the end of the square, and the square is uh, 2,000 uh, long each side. So that's all it is. It's a square shape that they're being given in all these cities. So as they enter the land, <coughs> um, the first thing they're told is uh, instructions for giving. From what you uh, uh, inherit, make sure that you give to the upkeep of the Levites, a place for them, the priests, uh, uh, Levites, to live and a place for them to form um, and those who have much give much little, they give little. Uh, and then we're told uh, that in their giving, they are to provide cities of refuge. That's really from verse 9. Uh, it's the main part of this chapter. Um, how are we going to deal with killing? Um, and God is a God of justice. Um, and the principles laid down in Numbers 35 uh, and elsewhere um, in, in, the old, uh, in the Old Testament, um, some of you are, are, in, uh, are in law by profession, but these, these, these statements, um, these rules, uh, these commands of God are still foundational uh, in, uh, in every um, uh, order of justice. Um, the uh, criminal justice, uh, criminal laws of England and of Scotland uh, are based on, on these. This, these. This is a great definition uh, of the difference between manslaughter and murder. Uh, it's uh, a great um, a principle of uh, different uh, punishments, 
depending on the crime and so on. Uh, and, and God's a God of justice, and he will see that justice is done. Uh, and uh, they need to deal appropriately with killing. Uh, life is precious. I shall not kill. Um, and a, a great mark of a godless society is that there's no rule of law. Uh, you know, or when, when, when a, a godly society is, is, is ousted and there's a coup, uh, the one thing you immediately find is anarchy and there's no rule of law. That's, uh, that's a definition of a godless society. And you have mob rule and you have the lynch mob um, and there are societies around the world where you still see that. Um, if we were to point the finger generally, uh, you will find mobs lynching people uh, on blasphemy laws in some strange places. Someone says someone in return, and before long, they're just taken by a mob and lynched, and there's no justice. Uh, but God is a God of justice, and, uh, and these, these are the rules for how you deal with, with killing. Um, and it's a difference between uh, a godly society and a godless society. Um, so you find your spouse, if you're married, you find your spouse one day uh, in a pool of blood, dead, uh, and beside your spouse is someone who's holding an axe. Um, so what do you do? Uh, well, what you probably do is you see red mist, you grab the axe of the person and you batter them with it. And you kill them. Um, after you've done that, you find out that actually the person holding the axe just came along and found your spouse dead. And they weren't the killer at all. Um, and part of this, this whole city of refuge thing is to, is to avoid the red mist and, and to make sure there's justice. And so God in his wisdom says, look, you're going to provide these cities of refuge. And if someone, uh, if someone dies, um, then, and the person that's involved in that, that, that death uh, can flee uh, for a time that they might get justice and a fair trial uh, and not just be dealt with by red mist and mob rule. Um, and so uh, you have this provision in verses 10 to 12. Uh, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying to them, when you become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person uh, unawares. That is, this just happens, an accident we might describe. Uh, and they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger who killed my spouse, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. Um, and this, this is still foundational to English criminal law. Um, it's what we do. Um, we don't have cities of refuge. Uh, but people are remanded in custody until they get a fair trial. Uh, and it might not have been them. And uh, it might have been deliberate. And it might not have been deliberate. Um, and, and the person uh, with the axe may well have killed your spouse. But they might have just been out cutting a tree. Uh, and the axe f flew out of their hand. Uh, and... Uh, and hit your spouse, and they died. Um, that's manslaughter. It's not murder. Um, and all of that is, is in here in Numbers 35. Uh, and it's all uh, greatly detailed, and, and you wonder why it's here. And essentially it's here because God is just, and he wants order, and, and he's a holy God, and, and they're, they're a holy nation, and they're, they're going into this land, and it has to be uh, run in order. And there has to be justice. And it's not a mob rule. Um, and so all these things are set up. Um, so from verse 17, um, I mean, if it's murder, it's murder. Uh, and one of the things that happens from verse 17 on several times 
is the murderer dies. Um, capital punishment, uh, and there's, you know, it's very, <laughs> it's impossible to read this text in any other way other than if there's a murderer, then the murderer is, is, is killed. Um, if he smite, throwing a stone wherewith he may die, and he dies, a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Um, uh, and, um, and, and so it carries on, verse 18. Uh, whether it's a hand or a weapon of wood, he may die, he die, he's a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Uh, the, remen- the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. Um, and, and if it's hatred, and he, he lays in wait, and um, all of that. But not every death is as a result of, of murder, and of hatred, and of premeditated murder. Um, and so you have this manslaughter definition in verse 22 on. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, you know, the axe just flew out of his hand. Um, Manslaughter it still happens today, of course, it happens everywhere. Um, and, and you get corporate manslaughter, and uh, there was, there's not an intention, a premeditation, a premeditated intention to murder, uh, but, uh, but the person dies, and it's manslaughter. And there's a punishment for manslaughter, but it's not the same as for murder. Uh, and so verses 22 to 25 deal with manslaughter, um, and the, they're, they're kept uh, in the city of refuge uh, until the high priest dies, um, verse 25. Uh, that's the length of time. Uh, and there's a city of refuge. Uh, and, and so you have this, the, the definition of murder and of manslaughter. You have different uh, punishments for either crime. Um, and then you just have all of this justice tied up. Um, So at verse 29, um, these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Um, Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death uh, by the mouth of witnesses. Um, But God's a God of justice. One witness isn't enough. Uh, And we're told elsewhere uh, in Deuteronomy, the need for two witnesses. Um, So there has to be witnesses. It's got to be a fair trial. Um, there are people set aside to do all this and to make these judgments um, and and uh, and then we're t- the, the whole issue here of um, that you can't buy this off <laughs> um, uh, verse 31 moreover sh- you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer um, uh, these great provisions, you know, so you, you know, the very wealthy can't buy away justice. Uh, if the very wealthy are murderers, then they will face capital punishment. You can't buy off justice. Um, that's meant to be foundational for English law today. Uh, hopefully it's still the case. You cannot bribe your way out of, uh, out of guilt. Uh, and the same is said uh, for that um, who is the man, the, the one that committed manslaughter. You shall take no satisfaction for him that has fled to the city of refuge. He can't come out early. He has to wait his time. Uh, and, and just here in a few verses uh, that might seem a long, long way of, away from us and from Leicester and from the 21st century, uh, but these great principles continue to apply. God is holy and he's a God of justice. Uh, and crime and punishment and and witnesses and and a fair trial these are all things that haven 't been invented by clever lawyers they 've been invented by God because he 's a God of justice so numbers thirty five um, these are commandments for giving and for dealing with killing. Numbers 35 has provision for saving as well. Verses 33 and verses 34. 
So she, you shall not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defileth the land. The land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit wherein I dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. I were not far from Revelation. Eh? The Lord who walks among the candlesticks. He's the God who's, who's here, knows everything about us. He dwells with his people. Um, the bloods, life bloods. Uh, life is precious to God. And men and women, boys and girls, are made in the image and likeness of God. You, thou shalt not kill. And blood spilt defiles the land. Um, uh, the Hebrew is really strong. It is its pollution. Uh, it is an offence to a holy God. The same sort of foundation brings statements like right, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is an offence to any people. Uh, God is righteous and holy and, and blood shed is, is a pollution. Blood's an interesting thing, isn't it? You know, in scripture, blood does two things. Here, we're reminded it defiles. Um, I mean, a stain, a pool of blood is, is a horrible thing. It pollutes. It tells a story of wickedness. But blood saves. And blood atones. Um, all through the Old Testament, sacrifices. Indeed, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. And there's a precious blood. The lifeblood of Jesus Christ, of course, that saves. In Numbers 35, uh, there's uh, a repeated mention of the person who's the main character. Um, he is there in verse 12, 19, 21, 24, 25, 27. He is the avenger, uh, the revenger of blood. Um, verse 12, uh, they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger. Um, so the avenger is the, the one who's, who finds the spouse dead and, and wants revenge and, and wants justice and, and, and would kill the first person that's, uh, that's on the scene. But there's a city of refuge and, and they can go there while the red mist, as it were, dies down a bit. Uh, Verse 19, the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him, with him. He shall slay him. Um, so the revenger of blood here um, is the one who is uh, the next of kin, uh, or more precisely in Hebrew, uh, this is the kinsman redeemer. Uh, uh, you may or may not be familiar with the phrase. <clears throat> so there are instructions for the kinsman redeemer in Deuteronomy 25. You don't have to turn there. If you can look at it for homework if you want. But from Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10, it's the, the, it's the one who keeps uh, the family line going. If, if the spouse dies uh, and he has a brother, then the brother takes the wife and keeps the family line going. The kinsman redeemer... Uh, most famously in scripture appears in the book of Ruth. Um, and we, if you want to find Ruth, just after um, Judges, uh, you have Ruth um, and you have Boaz. Um, uh, and Ruth uh, 3, uh, verse 12, uh, Boaz says, And now it is true, that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, that it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, uh, as the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. Um, one of the duties of the kinsman redeemer 
is the one who delivers his relatives from danger. Uh, and, and so if the rel relative dies or is murdered, uh, then it's the kinsman redeemer that's got to seek justice. And there's blood being shed. Uh, and those great words of Boaz, but there's one who's a better redeemer, a closer redeemer. Uh, and, and this um, chapter in part uh, signifies uh, of, uh, of blood that saves uh, and that there is a redeemer. Um, Jesus, the great redeemer. God's own son and uh, blood defiles um, but there's blood that saves um, and, and Jesus comes in time as our, as our redeemer and, and, and the kinsman redeemer in Numbers 35 and, and seeking justice and, uh, and, and, and all the wrongs being fixed but ultimately we need a perfect redeemer uh, and ultimately there is there's one who will come and uh, and all the innocent blood that has been shed uh, will be will, will truly find justice uh, all the wrongs uh, 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 that you have suffered and i've suffered and the world has suffered all of them will be sorted uh, and all the pains and um, all of them will be healed when the true redeemer comes the true kinsman redeemer. Numbers 35. Um, it's about giving. It is about what to do uh, when there's killing. But praise God, it also points forth to uh, saving. And it's, uh, a better blood and a precious blood and a great redeemer. Uh, one better than any of the Kinsman redeemers here in Numbers 35, a, a redeemer better than Boaz, but from that line, even Jesus Christ, his precious blood, our kinsman, our redeemer. Praise God, there is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son. And we can flee to him. He is ultimately the place of refuge. Um, and the only secure place um, in a world that's ruined there is safety and redemption in Jesus Christ and in no one and nowhere else amen let's pray father God we thank you that thou art a holy God a God of justice Lord, we thank you that your great plan to save um, is a just plan uh, and a, a scheme where, Lord, you remain just uh, and you uh, justify the ungodly by giving your Son uh, our Redeemer. Uh, we thank you for one who shed his precious blood and that atones. Uh, and deals with all the wrongs of the world. And uh, Lord, we thank you for this reminder uh, that there is a place of judgment and you are a God who cares for justice. And ultimately, Lord, there will be a final judgment. And Lord, we pray we would each be found safe and not in a city of refuge, uh, but in uh, the man of refuge, our great Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we ask these things in his precious name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing uh, Safe to the Rock uh, That Is Higher Than I, 702. Um, 702 in Christian hymns. Safe to the Rock That Is Higher Than I, My Soul and Its Conflicts and sorrows would fly. So sinful, so weary, thine, thine would I be. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee, hiding in thee, hiding in thee. Let's stand and sing. 